I'm Celine the Tulip, and in this video I'm going to show how you can use random number generation to make your music more interesting in an ear sketch script. Okay, so this script has um, three fit media calls. It also has an array of a whole bunch of favorite samples. There's uh, 11 um, items in this array. Um, and so this is what the music looks like right now. We're grabbing items 7, 8, and 10 out of the array, and it sounds like this. Okay, so if we wanted to make use of random numbers, first we have to understand how random numbers work in JavaScript. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to create a for loop for var x equals 0, x less than um, 100, x equals x plus 1. And so this is going to loop 100 times. And in here, I'm going to create a variable that's called number, and I'm going to assign it to math.random. So math.random is calling JavaScript's math library and saying, give me a number. Now what it's going to give me is a number between 0 and 1. So it's going to give me a decimal number. And I can see the kinds of numbers it's going to give me if I print out num to the console. So let's do this. And if we run and we look at the console, we see here where it says running script and then it has given me, it's printed out 100 lines, and you can see what the numbers look like here, 0 0.81, 0 0.349, 0 0.156. So it is giving me numbers, random numbers between 0 and 1. So that's, that's good, but we actually probably usually want random numbers in some range of random whole numbers. So maybe we want like a number between 0 and 100, or 0 and 50. How do we do that? Well, this is where we take the 0 to 1 number, um, the decimal number, and we multiply it by the top end of the range. So if we want a number between 0 and 50, we can multiply this by 50. So if we do this and we run, and again we look at the console to see what's being printed out, now you can see we're getting numbers that go from you know, we've got 12, 47, 26, 39, 17. So this is giving us numbers that are between 0 and 50. But it's still giving us with these long decimals. And we don't really want that. So what we can do is use another math function and actually get the floor, which rounds down to the nearest whole number. So we can say, once we've got num, which is some decimal number between 0 and 50, we can say num equals math.floor of num. So we're passing in the decimal number here, and it's going to give it back to us with the decimal part cut off. So now if we print it out, we should have numbers that don't have the decimal part. So let's look at that. All right, and so now if we look at our console, we have random numbers that go from 0 up to 50, and that's great. So now that we see how this works, it's calling math random, multiplying it by the top end of our range, and then taking the floor of that to round it down and to get it into a whole number, that's a way to get random numbers. So how can we use this with our array of favorite samples? So I'm going to comment this stuff out, and we're going to instead do something up here. So we're going to create var num equals math.random and we're going to multiply it by the length of our array minus one. So our array is called fave samples, fave samples um, dot and we can get the length of it by typing dot length um, and we'll do minus one because we want to make sure that we don't overstep the end of the array. Okay. And now we can take num, and again, we want to get a whole number, so we'll say num equals math.floor of that num. So we're going to pass it in, and math.floor is going to round it off for us. So now num is going to be a number between 0 and whatever the length of the array is minus 1. So the length of the array is 11, so num is going to be a number between 0 and 10. And we can actually print that out to the console just to make sure that we're getting a number that makes sense. Then we can use this num as the index into our array. So if we do that, now the very first sample in our fit media 
is going to be some random um, sample from our array. We don't know which one until we run our program. All right, so it looks like if we look down at the console, our num ended up being five. So it is gonna grab sample indexed at five, which is gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, the RD rock pop electric bass. And sure enough, if we look up here, rock pop electric bass, and we can listen and see what this sounds like. And we can solo this. Oh, that one's barely coming through. Okay. All right. Now, if I, every time I run this, this is going to stay the same. Every time I play the music, it's going to stay the same, rather. But if I run this again and the code is recompiled, then the random number generator is going to get a different number. So let's run this. Okay. This time it got seven. And now we see we have a different um, music sample up on track one. And we'll solo it. Okay, and if we run it again, this time we got four, so now we can go back and play. Now, if we take num here and replace it, it's not going to give us three different, it's going to use the same um, random number that's generated for all three. So. If you're smart, you'll guess that this means that we'll get the same sample on all three tracks. All right, so now we got world percussion. They're going to be offset, so it's going to sound kind of interesting. Okay, but that's not really super interesting. So maybe what we want to do is generate three different nums. So that might be num1. Maybe we want to do another one. Bar num2. And we can actually just copy this because it's going to be sort of the same thing. And num2 equals math.floor of num2. And we can print that one out as well. Just to see what we're getting. And now we can set this one to be num2. And we'll do the whole thing again and create a third random um, number variable. We'll replace all of these with three. Okay and this will, will be num3. So now we're creating three completely random tracks and we can see what that looks like. Okay, so that was randomly mixing three different tracks from our favorite samples array. And if we run this again, we'll get three completely different ones. Okay, so that's just one way to use random numbers. Um, we could also use random numbers to decide randomly on which measure we want to start a song, um, or we could randomly decide which measure we want to end a song on. So there's lots of things that you can do here. The important pattern to notice is that we generate a random number, which gives us a number between zero and one. We multiply it by the high end of the range that we want it to go up to. And then we use the math.floor function to truncate it into a round whole number. Um, and then we can use that round whole number uh, in our fit media calls in a, in a variety of different ways. All right, so hopefully that gives you a sense of how to use random numbers to um, bring some interesting random effects into your ear sketch scripts. Thanks for watching.